Hey, hope you're doing really well. This video is a bit of a catch-up video. I had footage that I didn't realize I hadn't used in part four. So this will be part five, but really in the timeline, these things happened before the part four video. So sorry for any confusion. Okay, so I've got the frame upside down here. I'm just measuring the cross members. So between this one, and I'm gonna put one further back where you see my legs are right now. Uh, between those two is where I had originally planned for the big battery to rest within and be supported by these, these cross members. These are one and a quarter inch square aluminum tubing, eighth inch wall. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm measuring the distance between the front of the frame and that cross member, just trying to give myself enough room to do that fillet weld on the inside corner without it being too tight. And I want to have that front cross member as close to the front as possible because I want the center of gravity to be closer to that front wheel. I want more weight on that front wheel. I did some tests with my previous prototype and found that I needed sufficient weight on the front wheel so that it had traction in loose gravel going up hills. Otherwise the hub motor in the front wheel would just skid out on me. I did several hours of research into center of gravity positioning and the effect on vehicle dynamics. To calculate your center of gravity, you take a datum point just ahead of the front wheel in my case, and you measure each piece of the frame. Uh, you measure the distance from the datum point for each piece times the weight of that piece. And then you add that all up on the top line and you divide it by your total weight. So here I am fitting the torsion axles with the wheel on to help me guide it onto the frame. I'm just going to clamp it down with these C-clamps and I'm using little strips of aluminum just to protect the finish on the torsion axle and to protect the aluminum frame itself. So here's a shot of the frame and the inner welds. You can see they're really beefy. The outside welds, I did grind them off because I want to create a flat face for the aluminum composite panel. Now I know that does weaken the frame and I tried my best to leave as many welds unground as possible. But based on some earlier tests with a sledgehammer and smashing away some of these joints, I feel like it's going to be plenty strong enough. We will see. So it turns out the cross members, I cut one of them a little too short. So what you see here is I'm welding back on an extension and then I'm going to recut it. So you can see here, this thing is getting a little too big for my 10 foot square shop. I'm going to be moving down to my parents pretty soon. Here I've just got it set up against the wall and I'm going to finish all the welds on the underside that I haven't got to yet. As this thing comes together, I'm going to need a test battery before I build the big battery. So I've taken apart a battery from an e-bike. I bought this battery a few years ago and one of the cells was um, discharging faster than the others. So there's something wrong with it. So what I've done, I'm just going to take these cells apart and I'm going to repurpose this into a, a test pack that I will only ever use for testing. I'm not going to use a BMS with it, which is really not advised, but I will be storing it in a steel bucket when I'm not using it, just in case, out of the house so it doesn't burn down my house. That said, I'm still going to use precautions. So I've got these green sticky insulator rings that I'm putting on top of the positive terminals of each cell. That's just because each of these cells is, the negative cathode is actually the entire cylinder and the positive terminal is only the little button on the other end. So it's very easy for <clears throat> you to bridge the positive and negative terminals and the insulator ring just helps prevent that unpleasant spark or explosion that will destroy your face. So I'm using the disassembly of this old pack as a, a learning experience and practice. A lot of guys and gals who use recycled batteries, what you do is you use your multimeter and a battery charger, a capacity reader, and you figure out what the resistance of each cell is and what their capacity is remaining. And then you try to match par parallel groups. So in this case, there's only two cells per group. It's a 20S. 2p battery 72 volts so two cells in each parallel group in a series string of 20 and um yeah they're all pretty similar but i'm just trying to match the um, the capacity as closely as i can per pair a couple summers ago i built a really huge 42 amp hour battery that i put in my mountain bike and i rode that out to newfoundland and back from toronto and i used cell holders that i bought from aliexpress for that but 
As this is a, a pack reassembly, again, learning opportunity, I figured I'd use the hot glue method just to see what that was like. What I found was in a cool workshop, you really have to push the batteries together after putting the glue on pretty quick. Otherwise, the, the glue just hardens too quickly and the overall pack shape can get a little wonky. That's some good stuff right there. Yeah, that's the 404B contact cleaner used to clean off the cells before I begin spot welding. With my pack all glued together, I'm now gonna start spot welding on the nickel strips to the parallel groups and in series. I'm using a K-Weld spot welder, which I purchased from a guy in Germany. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I'll do a longer video when I build the big battery that will be the main energy source for my world travels. All right, so this is pretty exciting. I'm using a piece of plywood here, creating a makeshift platform. I'm gonna do a weight test, load this up with the full max end of 430 pounds of weight that this frame is supposed to be able to hold. We're about to find out. And I'm just using some deck screws and screwing on some supports near the end here where it doesn't have a cross member to rest on underneath. And then we'll be ready to go. What a special moment here. I've got the trailer hooked up to the bike. I can envision the results. I can appreciate the progress so far. Inertia, one of the world's great evils, can only be overcome by taking action getting it going. And then once you're on your way, you got that sweet elixir of momentum at your back. It's a beautiful thing. I brought my bathroom scale out on the driveway here. I'm going to weigh it up and just make sure that it's roughly what I expected. And it's coming in at about 95 pounds, which is pretty spot on, including the wheels that are on there. For the weight test, I'm using two old tires. And in the middle of those tires, I'm putting a few 50 pound dumbbells, 25 pound dumbbells. A lot of weight concentrated on the front, which is not exactly how it's going to be distributed, but better um, to have excessive weight, I figure, than, than less. So I've also got four boxes of my book, The Four-Year Olympian, to get me up to 430 pounds. And you should definitely pick up your copy of The Four-Year Olympian. You're going to want to take a read of that for sure. So as I wheel this out, you can see on the top of the tires there, I've got my test battery and it's wired up to the Grin All Axle front hub motor in the front wheel of the trailer. And then I've got an extension cable going from my cycle analyst on my bicycle handlebars all the way back to the controller for the, um, the trailer hub motor, which is also just sitting in those tires. So it's all pretty makeshift, but it's going to do the job and give me a sense of what this thing can do. Right away, I'm noticing some kind of grating sound. I'm so foolish. I'm, I'm thinking it's something to do with the controller or the hub motor itself, but it's actually the cable that goes into the motor. I've got it twisted around the, the dropouts. Somehow it's rubbing and I'm, I'm actually potentially doing damage to the cable here. So my solution is to just keep going and see if it goes away. This is actually a high performance strategy I learned when I rode in the Olympics with Team Canada. And our Olympic rowing coach, when we had injuries, he used to say, just keep rowing and your body will recover. Sadly, that philosophy failed me in this case. I've come to my senses and I'm now going to take the wheel off, fix that cable, make sure it's not rubbing, and start this thing over again. Uh, lo and behold, my little sister Julia shows up for a visit. Good time to press pause and enlist her as camera person. The big test. Gaining some nerve-wracking speed. I only took it up to about 40 kilometers an hour top speed here. Here you see a little bit of bounce in the frame. Hopefully I can resolve that as much as possible with how I distribute the load in the trailer. So I'm going to call that test a success and push on with the project. I bought this Froley Star bed system. It's kind of like a condensation mat, but also these plastic elements are springs and it should make for a more comfortable sleep. It's pretty much a Lego project, very straightforward laying this out. You can customize the grid to fit your space. Um, I've got it tapered down by my feet there because the wheel wells are on either side. 
The lighter colored springs are stiffer, so they can give you extra lumber support. You can put them wherever you want. I'm testing this out with a Coleman self-inflating mattress pad that I bought from Canadian Tire up here in Canada. And I've left the inflation valves open, so there's a foam core in the mats, and it gives a little bit of flex. And then together with the springs, I'm hoping to get, you know, a nice little bit of sink, really feel the support. That night I did end up taking this all down to the basement and sleeping on it and I was comfortable through the night. Okay, I'm using an angle finder to transport the angles from my SketchUp model onto the wall here. I'm going to use painter's tape and mock up what the interior space will be like. So I'm glad I took this step because it turns out it's not high enough for me. I'm going to have to move that peak a little higher I keep the other dimensions the same but I need more space for when I'm sitting in that front portion. I don't want to be so cramped. It's got to be bigger than that. It's got to be bigger than that. It's a custom build, may as well make it perfect for you. After raising it up about three inches, that feels right to me now. I decided to use this corrugated plastic to simulate a roof coming out of the wall from 90 degree angles. It, just having the tape on the wall just wasn't enough to give a sense of what it would be like to actually sit in this thing. So with just a bit of plastic coming out, it, you can get a much better sense of what it's going to feel like sitting in this. Of course, I don't want it to be like a, a coffin, right? I want to have a little bit of space and uh, you know, a little, maybe even a touch of luxury. I've been flip-flopping on whether or not I can take my dog Stella with me on this journey around the world in the cyber drop. I think at this point the answer is almost definitely no. Um, in fact, it's definitely not going to be possible. I just talked to a vet yesterday. It would be cruel to Stella, so I'm going to have to leave her behind. And I'm just grateful I've got a good support network. I will write to you often, Stella. I love you.